Hey, what's up? Lee Ron here. Today, the paint show is back and we're going to review these Rosa Gallery watercolors that were sent to me by Biata, who sells them locally here. They're actually made in the Ukraine. So if you want to support them, that's a good opportunity to do that. I will put links to everything in the description box below. Um, now, uh, I actually have here four colors that I chose personally, which means I'm curious to see how I'm gonna like them. These are colors that I either like and find useful or that I want to try out. So it's gonna be super interesting. Let's take it to the table and get started. Okay, so here we go. Uh, just to show you the package, because I always do these product reviews way too fast. Uh, so I wanna really go over the details. Now, the reason this is a little open like that is because I opened it to look at the colors and do some B-roll uh, filming. Uh, so that's not, it came really neat and really, uh, uh, good looking Rosa Gallery watercolors if you can read Russian uh, or is it I'm not even sure if it's Russian if you can read it go ahead uh, produced in Ukraine developed in collaboration with professional artists uh, and these are supposed to be professional grade uh, and so I'm really curious to see how they're gonna work uh, some instructions on how to store etc uh, and let's open it up and see what's inside I'm gonna take out the colors one by one these are all again colors I chose and you can find link in, in the description box both to the details of the colors and also to Beata's uh, Instagram handle uh, and every link you'll need also to get these because I just find black colors so useful I wanted this uh, black one in particular and grape is interesting I don't know we'll see uh, we'll see how how it uh, let's say compares to neutral tint, right? Um, so that's that, and you can see here. I guess that's kind of a serial number, something like that. Uh, light fastness, opacity, and all of those different information, and the pigments, of course, which is important. Pigment black seven, pigment violet nineteen, pigment violet violet three. Um, so yeah, that's the first one. And then we have another one that's gonna be our raw sienna, uh, which I really wanted to uh, go back and, and try and use a bit more. And uh, this one, I like when you rotate and it's the same direction, you don't have to go around like that. Uh, so this one looks like it may be uh, semi-opaque uh, or semi-transparent, not sure, and that's probably the light fastness, the stars. Uh, pigment brown, seven, pigment yellow, 42. Uh, that's gonna be an interesting one for me. It's been a while since I used a raw sienna and I may find something like this becoming a staple of mine, honestly, because I really need that kind of a yellow. And then we have cobalt turquoise. This is the one I'm actually most excited about. This is gonna be pigment blue 28. Uh, so I'm curious to see how that one's gonna, uh, gonna be. I've been looking for a good turquoise or cobalt for a while now. So we'll see how this one is. Uh, and then lastly, we should have another turquoise if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so this is gonna be just turquoise. <laughs> and this one is pigment blue 15.3, which is, I believe, thalo blue. I don't remember if that's red shade or green shade. And then pigment uh, green uh, seven, thalo, uh, is it thalo? Yeah, pigment green seven. So that would be probably thalo green, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. So these are all four paints. And I'm gonna bring some paper and we'll do some test swatches. Okay, so uh, we've got our swatches here ready to go. Now I'm actually gonna fill in the palette. I just thought I'd show you this stage. Now let me zoom in here. Thought it would be fun to show you some of the details. Sometimes it's interesting for people to see how the paint pours out. So why not? Oh, this is really nice. So the paint is quite moist which is good for us. Uh, usually that's a good sign. Sometimes, you know, the paints separate inside the tube, uh, which is not always the, you know, the maker's fault. Sometimes that's just, you know, time. Uh, but yep, so here we go. And, you know, I know I'm supposed to use the toothpick to kind of uh, mix it inside the, the tube, but that's fine. And here we have our cobalt turquoise. Let's see what it's actually interesting, Ooh, this is nice. This may be a color I end up really loving. Probably not for an entire painting, but uh, maybe, and you can see how bright that is. That's, that's impossible to mix, probably. Um, and then we have our turquoise. That's, that's a really bright color. Curious to see how it'll 
end up looking on paper and here we go with the uh, cobalt with the turquoise sorry uh, so let's go to the paper and do some swatches so I thought why not do it this way and actually show you the mixes uh, and everything up close so to show you the palette and we're gonna start with that um, black grape color and let's see what this one looks like um, and see how it maybe reminds us or doesn't remind us of something like neutral tint so it's good news it can get really dark very easily I didn't have to do almost anything here that really activated fast that's really nice I'm actually gonna have to add some water to make sure it dries a little lighter and then let's see here it really reminds me of neutral tint though I'm not sure I don't remember the exact pigments for neutral tint so it may not even be close uh, but yeah oh I touched the cobalt there we go that's not probably not the best uh, not the cobalt what's what's uh, what's my deal with cobalt today the turquoise probably not the best color to touch just because it's super probably staining uh, but we'll see we'll see I'm not I'm actually not sure uh, so that is our grape uh, black uh, let's move on to our raw sienna let's see what this one looks like I'm gonna try not to bring in too much water here because otherwise it's gonna be a big mess so raw sienna tends to be a bit of a harder kind of paint tends to dry a little harder uh, I always try, like I like the way they look but I always have issues with how they handle which is again not really the the manufacturers fault or anything like that it's just the the way the paint is structured uh, if you have a good recommendation for a raw sienna that uh, maybe isn't as hard like I can really feel it you know it's grainy and hard um, that'll be interesting for me otherwise I'm gonna stick to maybe yellow ochre or something like that but this one looks really nice in terms of uh, and it gets dark quite easily which is a plus because sometimes these don't uh, so that that will be our raw sienna could be a good kind of primary uh, yellow to use I suppose and then let us move on to our uh, cobalt turquoise how am I gonna do this let's do it like maybe let's do it like this I'm gonna I'm gonna try and hold the palette here um, that's actually what's what I'm most curious about look at this thing okay it's pretty hard I just poured it and it's it feels hard too which is okay uh, feels a little more milky aka a little more opaque which is good for me because that's gonna probably be kind of the details I add uh, around the end of the painting right so that's that definitely feels a little more opaque let's see here really really nice that's see that's a color you're gonna have a really hard time just mixing on your own uh, probably almost impossible you, no matter what you use I think if you use like phthalo phthalo blue and together with you know the lemon yellow or something you won't get this I don't think you'll be able to so that's just reality you're gonna need this speciality kind of color there and I'm gonna have plenty of color here to use for future paintings too that's why I wanted to put it on this section of the palette it just isn't uh, as often used so I can just use these uh, and let's see here I'm gonna do the last one so this is our turquoise just turquoise uh, let's see what this one looks like quite strong wow interesting let me move this to the side here and hopefully you can see uh, my mix too sorry for being a little clumsy this time so this one's really nice and it gets dark very easily which is a plus they're actually they feel quite similar in the looks but this one feels like it has a bit more green to it which actually makes sense it has pigment green 7 I just now realized that actually makes perfect sense uh, and pigment green I guess phthalo green uh, is very strong which explains how this goes so dark so this could be an interesting color I'll have to figure out how I'm gonna use it because this one's a little more transparent I could probably rely on it as a supplemental primary color unlike this one that just isn't strong enough but it is opaque so that's good but look at how dark it gets you can see this on the palette too this is super duper dark right um, so that's interesting that's a really interesting color actually 
Uh, and then if I just take it straight out of the thing here, look at how dark this gets. This could be good for monochromatic work. My camera actually can't handle all of this uh, blue. It doesn't show it properly at all. So let's zoom out a bit and I'm gonna do some mixes here and hopefully the camera will kind of readjust and show it properly. So maybe that's a bit of a more accurate representation of the colors, but I'm gonna share pictures as, um, as you look at this and, and you'll you'll better see it. Um, so I'm actually curious to try and mix that, the raw sienna here um, with the turquoise and kind of see what we can get here. This lovely range of muted greens. You know what, that is just beautiful. Um, as long as the raw sienna doesn't dry too hard on the palette, I very well may uh, use these two together quite a lot. Um, they do mute each other, which is a good thing, I guess. Uh, depends on what you're looking for. Uh, but I feel like I could totally base, and let's add some quinacridone here, see what these look like. I feel like I could totally base an entire painting off of this. Um, that's really interesting. Uh, let's try and do the same, but with the um, cobalt turquoise here. A little bit of a lighter, and you can really see this on the palette how much lighter this one is gonna be, even in its darkest state, compared to the uh, turquoise, just a turquoise. Uh, so let's see how these two mix. So these feel like they neutralize a little more, even. Um, that's interesting. Uh, now I'm gonna try and mix a bit of my uh, raw sienna with the quinacridone rose here, which is a combination I'm familiar with. I have used raw sienna before. Uh, but this range is beautiful. This range is really nice looking actually. Uh, and I may try and, and use that as kind of my uh, palette uh, for a while and see what this looks like. This combination, I, I can see so much done with it and I can already imagine the atmosphere and what it would look like. So uh, I guess really, really nice colors. Um, very interesting. I just wish the raw sienna would be not like a raw sienna, which I expected it to be this way. Just less grainy, but that's just how these go. I'm gonna have to find a good yellow ochre instead, I think. Um, so it's gonna be probably yellow ochre uh, and this turquoise that just looks beautiful and they neutralize really nicely. Uh, even though, again, color-wise, I really like the way it looks. Um, so, so I may experiment more and see what works, but this is a lovely palette right here, right? Let me show you up close. This is really, really nice. I mean, this is, it's so good. Um, it's been a while since I did something like this. I probably should revisit the more ochre-y uh, yellows compared to my current um, uh, Indian yellow that's kind of feels a bit like nickel azo yellow just to show you a comparison because you you see it all the time in my processes but just to show you again this is my cur current yellow it's way closer to maybe lemon or nickel azo or Hansa uh, and I'm a big fan of these raw siennas and um, even burnt siennas and uh, yellow ochre is a bit more earthy and, and muted. Uh, but I guess this is it for the review. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, these are very interesting paints. I'll probably explore more of them. The black color, honestly, the black grape color, that's just a useful color for me. So I'm gonna go through this once I run out of neutral tint or even before that. Uh, just a very useful one. Uh, all of these are interesting. I wonder how these two are gonna pan out. Probably this will be used opaquely, kind of like the umbrellas that Joseph's book which Alvaro Castanelli I like to do. Uh, and this one I'm gonna use probably as a mix with my primary colors. Uh, but in any case, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Let's wrap it up fast uh, face to face. So I hope you enjoyed seeing these. If anything, uh, this reminds me of how much I like the earthy uh, yellow. So I'm definitely gonna be taking steps to do a bit more of that. Um, I like this overall feel. This honestly could be a lot of things. Could be a port scene with strong uh, blues for the water. This could be a desert scene even uh, with all of these combinations of yellows and, and purples and pinks. Um, just really, really nice combination. These feel high quality. Of course, you'll have to do the light fastness test and everything, but they are supposed to be uh, artist grade. So I would recommend you check these out. Look at the brochure, see if you have any other pigments that you're interested in. And if you can get them for a, a decent price that is competitive with your other brands, I would give these a try without hesitation. 
Um, so thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the links because I'm going to put everything there. It's going to be a link to uh, uh, Beata's uh, Instagram and also to Rosa Gallery, whatever I can find, brochure, links to purchase. Definitely let me know if you end up purchasing them and how you like them. Leave a comment, leave a like, uh, let me know your thoughts on this one. And it's been a while since we did a paint, uh, uh, a paint show episode. There will be more, but I want to thank you once again, and I will see you in the next vid real soon. Thank you.